that the alpha particles are helium nuclei. So if they are the helium nuclei, if they are the nucleus of helium, they would be having two protons. So you, you must be familiar with this uh, structure, uh, the atomic structure of the helium. It is the second element in the product table. Its atomic number is two and the atomic mass is four like this. So if I try to draw the structure in the nucleus, we'll be having two protons and we'll be having two neutrons and around the nucleus in helium, how many electrons would be there in the neutral helium atom? What do you think? Two, very good. So you must be having the same number of electrons as the number of protons. So you would be having two electrons in the or orbit around the nucleus over here. So what we do is if we get rid of the, these electrons from the helium atom, what are we left with? We are left with the nucleus of the helium atom. That nucleus of the helium atom are considered as the alpha particles. Not the entire atom, just the nucleus of the helium atom. So you get rid of the electrons, you'll be left with the nucleus, that would be your alpha particles. Beta particles are considered the same as the electrons, so there's nothing much here electrons we are already familiar with the electrons and gamma particles are considered as you must have studied that ele electromagnetic spectrum the rays with the highest frequency highest energy and the lowest wavelength were gamma rays so these are your electromagnetic radiations let's talk about their mass for the Alpha particles, their relative mass is considered as four because they have two neutrons, two protons. And for the beta particles, their relative, uh, we consider the mass as one over, approximately as one over 2000. And one over 18 something, but we call it one over 2000. And we call it that the mass of beta particles is almost negligible compared to the mass of alpha particles. And since gamma ra radiations are radiations, so we call that their mass is zero. They don't have any mass. Let's talk about the charge. Like I told you, from the helium nuclei, if we get rid of the electrons, so you'll be left with two protons. So it would no longer be neutral, rather there would be a charge of plus two. Plus two of the elementary charge E. Okay, E here represents the elementary charge which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. It is a charge of protons and it is a charge of electron. If it is a charge of proton, it is with a positive sign. If it is a charge of electron, it is the same magnitude but with a negative sign. Then for the beta particles, their charge is negative one, obviously makes sense, negative one times the fundamental or the elementary charge. And for the electromagnetic radiations, they don't have a charge, we don't say their charge is zero, we, we just call that they are neutral. There's no concept of charge for them. Let's talk about their speed. For the alpha particles, they are slow. Beta, uh, beta particles are fast. And gamma particles, sorry, gamma rays are the fastest and their speed equals to the speed of the electromagnetic radiations which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So gamma particles slower than that and alpha particles much slower than that. What is the reason? I mean 
their mass. Alpha particles were the heaviest for them they'll be very slow. The beta particles have much less mass much lesser mass compared to alpha particles so they'll be slightly faster or sorry much faster and gamma particles sorry gamma rays are the fastest their speed equals to the speed of electromagnetic radiation matter of fact all the electromagnetic radiation have the same speed which the light itself because light is also an electromagnetic radiation and the speed is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second in simple words it is 300,000 kilometers per second okay then the next thing is ionizing ability I'll explain this one in detail as well ionizing ability so for this one the ionizing ability is the highest a particle the ionizing ability is medium not only the ionizing ability but the penetrating power as well and penetrating for penetrating power for alpha particles is low but there for gamma particles it is high and the ionizing ability for the gamma particles is low okay so I'll explain this thing we have these two terms we need to discuss it separately that what is the ionizing ability and why the alpha particles have the highest ionizing ability and why do they have the lowest penetrating power so it is itself a separate topic so I'm not going to explain this for, for the time being let's take a look at this uh, the next characteristic stopped by and this is quite an important one so the alpha particles they can be stopped to a few centimeters of air or a sheet of paper However, the, uh, the beta particles, they are stopped to a few millimeters of aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. And the last one, the gamma radiation, they are stopped a few centimeters of lead block. And the la last factor we have here, deflected by electric and magnetic field. Alpha particles are deflected. What way they are deflected? That's a separate thing. We study that separately as a topic. So yes, they are deflected. Why? Because they have a charge. So they are deflected by electric field and magnetic field. Beta particles, yes, they are deflected by the electric field and magnetic field. Once again, why? Because they have charge, because they have mass. What about the last one? Gamma radiations, these are not deflected by electric or magnetic field because they do not have any charge. So the electric or magnetic field would be having no effect on it. So this table is very important one. Uh, these two definitions we'll explain afterwards. Ionizing ability and penetrating power. And this one as well, deflected by electric and magnetic field. So in that one, you need to apply the left-hand rule or the right-hand rule to find the direction of the deflection of the 
uh, alpha or beta particles.